Apple finally announced their long rumored AR headset, Apple Vision Pro. I'm trying to sort out how I feel about this. So I just wanted to talk about the use cases and ask why would I want the Apple Vision Pro? The demos and videos that Apple showed were impressive. Very impressive, mesmerizing maybe. Everything they showed looked really cool, like being able to have a very large movie screen just to yourself or having multiple apps side by side that you can control and manipulate and move around and readjust the size. The idea of turning the immersion up or down just to find the right amount of reality is very, very cool. I mean, the amount of tech that they showed off is seriously impressive. Between the dual 4K plus displays, all the cameras, LiDAR, infrared projectors, front-facing screen, the ability to get down to 12 milliseconds. The windows have shadows and react to ambient light in the room. There's constant tracking of your hands and performing gesture control. Your eyes are used to select things on and on and on. All of that is just way over-engineered in you know the Apple way. There's no denying that what they showed off on stage was stunning and hard to believe if true, but I'm having a hard time trying to figure out what I would use this for. Apple showed this being used for work apps, for browsing and Safari and watching videos and taking FaceTime calls. So for office use, I think there's a couple of issues with integrating the Vision Pro into the office use. And I don't think I'm going to wear something like that in an office, walking around, talking to coworkers, going to and from conference meetings. I don't care that your eyes appear out of the void on the front. This thing just will not be socially acceptable inside most office environments, I think. If I'm in my office at work or here working from home, wearing this thing all day to run office apps, messaging, video calls, that's going to get super tiring on my face and my head. Some reviewers in the press commented after the hands-on that the Vision Pro is heavy. What type of long-term consequences could there be from wearing a headset like this for many hours a day? Actually, it reminds me of the movie The Jerk with Steve Martin, where people who used the OptiGrab went cross-eyed over time. When OptiGrab came out, I thought it was the greatest thing ever. And I bought a pair. And this is the result. What can we expect from something pulling on the front of your head for hours on end? I already have bad posture, so I don't know. When it comes to the applications for better or worse, it looks like most of them are basically iPad apps. And if you're supposed to get work done on these, it might be difficult because have you ever used Excel for iPad? It's pretty limited. But the ability to move your whole Mac display into the Vision Pro does actually look pretty interesting. However, it doesn't seem to add real estate, it just kind of changes the size. However, I am really, really interested in trying this out. I want to try it out, I wanna see how well it works. And let's be honest, people are going to use this for their uh, uh, private browsing. And then there's battery life with this headset with the battery pack dongle thing lasting about two hours or up to two hours, which means you'll have to have multiple batteries to use throughout the day or plug it in constantly in order to stay charged up. Luckily, you can plug it in and charge it with the help of today's sponsor, Ugreen. The Ugreen Nexode 30 watt charger is a compact and powerful charger built on GAN 2. This charger supports fast charging on iPhones and Samsung super fast charging, which means I can charge my iPhone 14 Pro Max up to 55% in just 30 minutes. Not only does the plug fold up into itself for an easier fit in your pocket or bag, but the Nexode protects your devices with built-in short circuit, overload, overvoltage, and temperature protection. Yes, this 30 watt Nexode can fast charge your iPhone wired, but it can also be used with MagSafe for fast wireless charging. It can charge your iPads and tablets, and it can even charge your MacBook and more. You can get one of these Ugreen Nexode 30 watt chargers today and save 30% with a Prime exclusive discount using the link and information in the description below. And my thanks to Ugreen for sponsoring this video. Apple spent a lot of time showing off FaceTime using the Vision Pro, and it did look pretty cool how you can stack people up right next to your applications. And during the demo, I instantly wondered how others would see you if you were wearing the headset, and Apple did answer that. After a setup procedure requiring you to scan your face, an interpretation of you is then sent to the other people on the call. And interpretation seems like the right word. In the demo, it looks almost like a high-end video game render of a character. It renders facial expressions and movements like some kind of deep fake version of you. It really looks like uncanny valley territory to me where it looks good, almost real, but off. Also, FaceTime is more of a personal interaction between you and your friends. You're holding up your device and you're having you know, a personal call. 
In the headset, it looks very impersonal because the others are seeing a graphic of you, not really you. This feature will also work in Zoom or Teams for work calls and maybe in the less personal interaction, it would be okay, but I can't really explain it, but something just feels weird talking to people you like this way. So for those two use cases for work and for FaceTime calls, it seems like a no-go for me, but I understand why some people will like it. Now, when it comes to entertainment, I do see myself being more interested in that. I could see myself sitting back and watching a movie on a Vision Pro with a really, really large theater environment all to myself. With the HDR abilities and the spatial audio, I do think it could be a really good use case. I've used this feature on other devices, although it has been a while, but it always felt lackluster. I didn't feel immersed in the movie. My hope is that Apple really is accurate with the latency and the precision it takes to lock a floating window in augmented reality, that it presents a really good, solid experience. And for a single person watching a movie or a show, this might be a really good use case of Vision Pro. I think I would really like it, but I usually like to watch movies with other people. I think movies are just better when you experience it with somebody else. Of course, you always have the option to buy one of these headsets for you and your significant other or your whole family and watch together using SharePlay at a prohibitively expensive $3,500 a pop. But we're not gonna get into pricing in this. Video games are the biggest, most obvious use case for a device like this, me thinks. Although if I'm wrong, let me know below, you always do. I think that gaming is a more personal activity than watching movies for most people and Apple showed playing arcade games using a PS5 controller. And this is really cool and again, as long as it actually plays out like Apple says, I'm excited to try this out. I really do wish that Apple would get their crap together though with AAA game devs so we can have actual console games or heck, even PC games on all of Apple's devices running Apple Silicon. With the release of the M2 Mac Pro, it's clear that supporting other GPUs is gone from Apple and Apple needs to make a really good use case or pay a large sum of money to start getting bigger games over to their platforms. If or when that happens, I think Vision Pro could be one of the best ways to play video games. And I know, I said all that stuff about wearing a headset for a long period of time and potential effects, but in a smaller bite-sized session, like watching a movie or playing a game, sitting back in a comfortable couch or chair, I think that might be acceptable versus an all-day desk use. Overall, I'm very curious about the Apple Vision Pro and I really do want to try it. I'm not trying to be negative, I'm just not sure in how many situations this thing or any headset makes sense beyond entertainment, at least for me. And of course, yes, I will want to try out Final Cut Pro on Vision Pro. But anyway, what do you guys think of the Vision Pro? Are you skeptical like me or can you not wait to get your hands on it? Let me know below. If you're interested in my thoughts on the new 15 inch MacBook Air, check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.